Rico McGee, another episode of the Rulers Many with the Strive Brothers Sports Show. We are here with head coach Chris Killsmeyer of the Cleveland State University women's basketball team. They clinched the number one seed on Wednesday in the Horizon League tournament. They are the 2024 regular season champions. How you doing today? Yeah, hey, any day we talk about Cleveland State women's basketball is a great day, but when you're doing it coming off of a championship, <laughs> that's some legit stuff. Let's do it. Yes, Absolutely. sir. Yes, sir. I just, how big has it What's like the mindset, the excitement that everybody's going, you know, just feeling right now this year? Well, when we came here and started this journey six years ago, you know, this is what we envisioned is winning championships and multiple championships. And, you know, everybody talks about those things, but very few actually get them done because they're really, really hard to accomplish. And that's what we've done so far with this group. And that's a part of their legacy for the rest of their life. You know, we've just tried to get them to understand, let's not make this the highlight of the year. Let's make what's yet to come, uh, something bigger and better than what we've accomplished already. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what this means for like those seniors that, that watch um, Cleveland State women's basketball that decide, yo, he's a winner. They know what it means to win. I want to play for a winning program. What do you think, can you talk about the importance of that? Well, certainly winning helps recruiting. There's no doubt about that. You know, we've been able to recruit some pretty good players in part because we've had really good teams come before them. You know, one of the most proud things I am of this program is how every year we've elevated what we've done. And, you know, we were coming off a 30-win season last year where you could look and say, well, you got really nowhere to go but down. And nobody looked at it that way. We just looked at the fact that we got another opportunity to go do something special and let's work as hard as we can to go out and accomplish really, really special things, and we've been able to do that. But. You know, it's about the future and we got to make sure that we continue to play well and sustain this level of success because that's really what I want to base a program off of is a model of consistency at the highest level. We've been fortunate to do that so far. When you talk about consistency, I want to kind of get into some of the nerdy stuff. So I've gone through and I went track every single game. So in your 31 games this year, you've only been out rebounded 11 times. You only lost three of those games, but on for the whole total year, you're out rebounding your opponents by 132. Every coach says defense and rebounding. What is it about this team that is actually successful at it day in, day in, week in, week out, game after game? Well, we talk about culture in our program a lot, and culture starts off the court and how you go about doing things long before you get to the court. However, when you're on the court, for us, it's about defend, rebound, run, and take care of the ball. Those are the identity of our program. And, you know, we base our everything that we do off of those four things, and they all kind of lead into the next. You, know, you can't be a good rebounding team if you're a bad defensive team because you're getting scored on all the time, so there's no rebounds out there. You can't run if you can't get stops. You can't run if you can't get rebounds. So. You know, it, it kind of just pieces together for us. We want to get that defensive stop. We want to turn teams over. We want to get a good, clean rebound, get it out, and then run. And, you know, I, I think every program in the country says they play really fast, but not all do. And, you know, that's what we want to, to be viewed as on an offensive mindset team is a team that gets up and down the floor and is really efficient offensively. And it starts with having possession of the ball, and to do that, you've got to get clean rebounds. Speaking of that possession, you have two guards in Colby Maples and Caleb Purdue that not just kind of can control the offense, but they're they're confident. They will take big shots. They will take it. What is it like as a coach to kind of go, okay, I sometimes don't have to do too much. I can just kind of let them flow. <laughs> you ask that question just like you or me. You, you know, <laughs> just those those two just got the it factor to them. You know, they're not afraid of any moment. Sometimes you have to make sure you don't coach them too hard because you want to stay out of their way. <laughs> On the flip side, you know, you're always trying to get the most out of your players. You know, there's not a player that I've ever coached in my career that didn't have a high potential, a high ceiling to themselves. You know, as a coaching staff, we're trying to squeeze the most potential into reality as we possibly can. And that, that's what makes our program go with our player development. We've got an incredible staff that man, it, it's just fun for me to stand on the sidelines and watch them work because, you know, our assistants are pretty good at what they do. It, it's just a total encompass program of, of, of greatness surrounded by everybody. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the lessons that you're going to take uh, from the regular season and how, you're go how are you going to apply that um, in the tournament moving forward? 
yeah, well, we wanted to win this first championship. We knew about five weeks ago we had to be close to perfect. We, we knew that we were probably going to have to win out. And, you know, that can carry a lot of pressure for everybody. And some people just can't handle that. This group has proven that they can handle that. But now that's the pass. You know, we like to talk in our program that there's there's three seasons. The preseason, the actual season, and then the postseason. With the postseason being kind of the, the climax of the year. And, you know, for us, it's about March. And it's about winning in March. And it's about winning deep into March. And to do that, you've got to be confident. You've got to play your best basketball this time of year. If, you, if you're not, you're going to have a hard time winning games because everybody wants another day. You, know, you just got to embrace each day and do the best that you can to possibly uh, give yourself an advantage to be a little bit better than everybody that you're playing. I think you guys have one of the best bench, actually the best bench in the Horizon League. And when you talk about Faith Birch, um, just talk a little bit about you know, her importance and her role, you know, especially grabbing boards and getting key baskets too. Yeah, she just brings so much energy to the program every single day. You know, when Faith Birch is in the building, you know it. <laughs> I didn't say on the court. When she's in the building, you know it. So she just brings that kind of energy to life. And, uh, you know, we need that spark off the bench. And she's just going to play so hard. It's one thing that you can always count on. You know, she's got so much potential. We're still continuing to try to coach her up and kind of mold some of that potential into reality. But you just love coaching the kind of kid that, that brings what she brings to a program. Yes, sir. Um, so, obviously, the Horizon League tournament coming up. Is it kind of weird to have a practice day for between yesterday and today where you don't actually have an opponent to prepare for, kind of almost like the preseason where you're, you're kind of just going through different motions? Is it is it kind of weird to have that all of a sudden smack dab at the very end of the yeah, season? Yeah, like because, that? you know, when, during the season, you know exactly who you're playing. So it is a little bit different, but I will say it's nice <laughs> yeah. because then, you know, we, we focused on practice of, of doing some things that we haven't really – done a whole lot of lately knowing that when we need those things they got to be there for us and you know but we also want to keep it light you know it's been a long year a lot of minutes on those kids legs and, you know so we want to be really strategic with how we do things and uh, you know make sure that we're putting our position in our players to be maximized at game, game time you had mentioned it you know three seasons preseason regular season and then coming into these tournaments into march does your philosophy kind of at all change as a coach? You know, do the timeouts get called? Maybe a basket sooner? Do, you know, maybe a, a minute, you know, maybe a substitution a couple minutes or a second or two quicker just because it is win or go home? I don't think so. You know, I'll really answer it. I mean, we've played 31 games up to this point. The fun thing about playing in our program, and I mean this with all sincerity, every game you play is the most important game of the year. You're trying to win. A regular season championship and to do that I'm very outspoken and saying you can't win it on one day but you can lose it on one day and so our our approach to every day is I think very similar to what it needs to be in in March so our, our, our kids are used to it and you know it's neat to not have to really change a whole lot of what, what you're doing this Absolutely. year other than just trying to get everybody to understand you got to play your best and not put too much pressure on yourself to make that happen. Sometimes you just got to go out and let it happen because sometimes you push so hard that you can end up not playing well because you want something so bad. You're, you're, you're pushing and asking and trying so hard. Hey, relax. Just let it happen. Um, you guys, you know, with, when it comes to the t you know tournament time, the tournament before the actual big dance, essentially you're playing some of these teams three times in a row. Not three times in a row, but three times. So you guys know each other a little bit. You know each other better. How do you approach playing a team a third time, knowing that they've seen your your best, you've seen their best, now you have to outbest each other? Well, we're always very outspoken in our program, either one step ahead of what's going on out there or you're one step behind. And, you know, as a coaching staff, we're trying to work really hard to put our players one step ahead of everything. but. You know, we're also quick to remind our players that everybody is really good at watching film and everybody is really good at trying to pick apart what you do go good and try to force you to play a different way. So it's it's just another one of those things in March that can work against you or it can work for you. And, you know, we take tremendous pride in the way we prepare and put our players in a position to be successful. But, you know, we win games because of our players. Players win games, make plays. 
like we said earlier, just stay out of their way. When you got good, talented players like we do, some of the worst things you can do is overcoach them. Just go let them play and do their thing. Sir. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, March coming up, regular season, you're going to be having a banner for it. I would say that's probably as successful as a regular season can go, unless you want to go undefeated. That's always a goal, but of course. What would you consider successful from this point forward? Yeah, you know, it, for me, it's always about the process. I never put something on that says you have to do this or it's a failure or anything like that. I, I just, I think that's narrow thinking. You got to stay in the moment. You got to do your best to win the moment. And when you do that, things will take care of themselves and most likely you'll end up getting what you want. So trust the process, stay in the moment. And, and we're big in our program about just go do your job and do it really well. And it's a philosophy that works. I got a couple of fun, well, quick rapid fire ones for you. We got all the good, the, the tough stuff out of the way. Let's do it. Game day superstitions or rituals. For me do personally, you, yeah, do you have any? I, I think for me, I'm just a routine guy. Okay. So I'm not, I don't really necessarily think I have superstitions, but I know when I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing. I am going to take a short little nap and this time, <laughs> yep. I'm going to fall asleep and it, it, it just, it's really how we model our program. I mean, I think our staff knows what I would answer right there. This, 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 <laughs> and, and they, they can script the day for me because okay. we're just that routine of a program. Sometimes that can mess with you, but it doesn't for our program because we know that that's who we are and what we want to be. Yeah. Uh, what's your pregame meal? Whatever Hannah's cooking up, <laughs> cooking up that day. You know, Hannah, Hannah's our director of ops, and she does an amazing job of, of getting really good, nutritious meals that our players like. And I'm a meat guy, so she, she knows <laughs> I want to have a lot of meat. I want a lot of chicken. I want some bacon in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, the more meat I can get in me, the better. I, I need that protein to fuel me. Now, players often will sometimes answer this different than coaches. More enjoyable to win on the road or at home? It's enjoyable to win, period. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot. you got to pick one here. A perfectly executed, drawn-up play or a defensive stop that leads to an easy run out? Yeah, you know the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> defensive stop that leads to a run out. I got a defensive stop and I got to score. Uh, you, you said the perfect executed possession. Well, they may get the ball back and score on this. <laughs> so we got to stop and we got to go get a layup. That's, that's Cleveland first. State women's basketball there, baby. Absolutely. Best, is, best sports advice you were ever given? Speechless. <laughs> Who'd have thought that'd happen, right? <laughs> uh, I just think it, you know, as a as a young, expiring coach, you know, my time at Iowa State really just taught me how to do things the right way off the court, and the philosophy and the things that I learned at a young age was pretty simple: work as hard as you possibly can and surround yourself with really good people that want to work as hard as they possibly can to, to, to create success for themselves and the program. Like, like I, want, I want our staff, I want our players to, to have such a strong piece of how much they're impacting everything. I'm always quick to say the head coach gets way too much credit. They get way too much criticism. It's the program, it's the culture. And, and for me, I just want everybody in the program to work as hard as they possibly can to chase success. And when you get a whole bunch of really good people doing that, amazing things can happen. And that's what we've done. And I've been fortunate to learn that at a young age. That is my advice to others. If people want the secret of success of what we do right here. I don't know that there's a whole lot of secrets about it. We work really hard. Like if, if you'd see what our staff and our players go through on a daily basis, it's impressive and they're not doing it to please others they're doing it because that's who they are as people and what they want to accomplish for themselves and when you work alongside of people that are like that it's an amazing thing okay I got two more for you the next the next one these ones aren't gonna be maybe as hard I love to ask this question to athletes and coaches of all sports because you're gonna get a different answer no matter what when did you fall in love with basketball <laughs> that may be a hard question too you know I, I fell in love with sports I don't know what exactly the story was, but I had a ball in the house and I was breaking things all the time. I was getting in trouble with mom because the ball was being thrown all over the house. 
wasn't necessarily a, a, a basketball. I used to have one of those little plush Mickey Mouse balls that would just get thrown all over the house. You know, I was at Tony Dorsett's 99-yard touchdown run mm. in Minneapolis on Monday Night Football. As a fellow and, Cowboys and, fan. And, yeah, <laughs> 1983. And that was a pretty cool moment. And they lost, and then I cried. And <laughs> yes. I, I've just been a hooked sports fan my entire life. And I, I think, you know, I, I had good coaches in high school of basketball that kind of inspired me. Then at a young age in college when I'm trying to figure out what the heck I want to do with my life, I, I got to work with the Iowa State women's staff, and that, that changed my life forever. And so I think it's just been a journey of sports love through my whole life, and I can't get enough of it. Absolutely. Go Cowboys. We're not going to go there. We could do this then. We could spend an entire another 15 yeah. minutes doing that. Yeah. Um, but I do have one more because you are an I'm Iowa not a very happy Cowboys fan. Neither, neither am I. It's, it's <laughs> tough. But you are Iowa State. You graduated. Cyclones. Uh, I do, I'm big on college football. Are you in on your Cyclones? Do you get to follow? Do you get to keep track oh, of Oh, yeah. I, I, again, just being a huge sports fan, you know, what Matt Campbell has done with Iowa State football is historic. And you just love being able to see stuff like that. You know, it's he took on a tough job with a, a, a tough situation to have a lot of success. And they went out and made it happen. And it's certainly been inspiring to, to see the journey. You just love seeing people do stuff that maybe others think you can't do and yeah. be inspired to, to, to chase that greatness and, and it's it, yeah I love everything about Iowa State no doubt <laughs> well not just Iowa State Iowa you got to play Iowa this year as well you saw Caitlin Clark it's a major story what she has done what is basketball like in Iowa it, uh, it it's it. <laughs> life <laughs> life it's just, it. you know it, it just the history of it is so significant People may not know that, like, my high school in 1993 was the last state six-on-six -six girls state championship at my high school. Hubbard Radcliffe High School is... Shout out to you. ...was, was, was, was the six-on-six -six state championship in 1993, the last one ever. Shout out to them. You know, my, my family sent me an article of me playing in those days when I, I had 26 points and 10 rebounds in that game. And I, I sent this article to Destiny yesterday and her response back to me was, you're so old, Hubbard Radcliffe doesn't even exist anymore because it's now South Harden. So that's, that's Destiny giving me, yeah, thanks Destiny. You were supposed to acknowledge my double-double, 26 <laughs> points. Like maybe I had a little game. It was supposed to go, man, great Correct. effort coach. But no, it's gotta be, your high school doesn't even exist, you old man. Like, that's our program. Just We have fun. Absolutely. What was your best moment? And this is my last question. Your best moment as an athlete in high school? You know, maybe it was when I was younger. You know, I was a two-time national champ gymnast on the floor exercise. Ooh. I could flip and tumble and twist and, and, and do all those things. And... Uh, so it was probably that, and I, I think that that really taught me at a young age how to deal with pressure. Okay. You know, so if, when we coach in these big games and stuff, I just think I'm wired a certain way to be able to, to control those moments because a lot of the influences that I had on myself as an athlete at such a, at, at such a young age, even though I didn't get to play collegiately because I wasn't good enough, but it just... It became a way of life of chasing success. Yeah. I just, I'm wired like everybody. Nobody wants to lose, right? But, but yeah. some people are just a little bit different with it. <laughs> right. And I'm a little different up here with it. I chase that success with everything I got. It's it's pretty fun doing that, but it's also hard doing it. So you just try to embrace the moment, and make them, make the most of it. But it's also why you are successful, coach. So I definitely want to thank, thank you, you for sir. joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Head coach Chris Kilsmeyer, game one for the ladies, Thursday, 7 o'clock. Please go get your tickets. Tip off is at 7. You don't want to miss it. They're the number one seed in the Horizon League, and they're looking to defend their championship from last year. With that being said, we're going to sign off. I'm Rico McGee. This is Ken Stroud. This is head coach Chris Kilsmeyer, and we'll see you in a minute. Love yours. Thank you, coach. Thanks a lot. That was fun.